الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد I want to talk about insha'Allah ta'ala an, an organ very small in size very dangerous and its affairs is very big and that is the tongue the tongue it's a small organ but a very powerful tool it can destroy and it can build and the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam he spoke about the tongue excessively and extensively alayhi salatu wasalam the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam told us that the tongue if it's upright if the tongue is good then the whole entire body will follow and if the tongue is corrupt the whole entire body will follow walidhalika al-imam al-tirmidhi narrated that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam said إِذَا أَصْبَحَ ابْنُ آدَمْ If the son of Adam wakes up in the morning, his tongue humbles itself, sorry, its body humbles, humbles itself, your body parts. They humble themselves and they speak to the tongue. The hands and the legs and the, the whole other entire body, they talk to the tongue every morning. And they say to the tongue, اِتَّقِ اللَّهَ فِيْنَا Fear Allah in our affairs. Fear Allah in our affairs. فَإِنْ إِسْتَقَمْتَ إِسْتَقَمْنَا If you are upright and steadfast, إِسْتَقَمْنَا We will be upright and steadfast. وَإِنْ إِعْوَجَجْتَ If you deviate, we will deviate with you. Ponder here. A lot of people, the reason why they fell into this problem with someone, or they fell out with someone, or a conflict occurred between them and someone, it's because of something they said. Every fight that tend to happen, they come from where? Words that were exchanged. And then the fist comes. The fist, it follows. So if the tongue is evil, the body parts will just follow. And if the tongue is good, the bodies will do the good. A person has to realize the se severity of this organ. It is the tongue that can take you to Jannah. And it's the tongue that can take you to the hellfire. The messenger said to the companions, "Man yadmanu ma bain lahiyhi wa ma bain fakhidhi admanu lahu aljanna." Who can guarantee me? Who can guarantee me that he or she will protect that which is between their two two jaw bones or between their two lips, i.e., the tongue, and that which is between their two thighs, which is their private part. Who's going to guarantee me that they're going to safeguard those two? The, pri the tongue and the what? The faraj, the private part. Who's going to guarantee me that they're going to look after those two? Adhmanu lahul jannah. I will guarantee him jannah. Nabi Muhammad said that, alayhi salatu wasalam. The Prophet told us, alayhi salatu wasalam, in another hadith, inna al-abda la yatakallamu bi kalima. A person will speak a speech. He'll say something. He will say words of good. He doesn't realize what he just said, how good and powerful it is. It took him to a high station in Jannah. He said to another person, Jazakallahu khaira, but he doesn't realize it. He said to another person, Wa alaykum as salam, wa rahmatullahi, wa barakatuh. He doesn't recognize, he doesn't really ponder and contemplate how much reward he has just taken. And he takes him high in Jannah. And the Prophet told us, alayhi salatu wasalam, the person will also speak a speech. He will say something of evil. He doesn't ponder over what he just did. He doesn't think about what he just said. And this speech has thrown him into the hellfire, has destroyed him. Many people today, their tongue is open. Whatever comes to their mind, they'll say it. My mother used to say, they talk because they can talk. They talk because they 
because they can talk. A person doesn't do that. Don't talk because you can talk. Think and ponder over it. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He was one who protected his tongue. He protected his mouth in general, alayhi salatu wasalam. It was said in the hadith, you all came across it, that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasalam, he laughed, hatta badat nawajidu until his molar teeth can be seen. I ask you a question, why will the companion say that? That the Messenger laughed until his molar teeth can be seen. It was because he never used to laugh that much anyways, alayhi salatu wasalam. He was a person who was serious. Salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. Now I want to speak about how can one work on this tongue? How can one make sure these last 10 days of Ramadan I don't go into any problems, any mistakes, any shortcomings due to my tongue? How? Number one, stay away from al khawdu fil batili. Don't speak about falsehood. From the things that are falsehood is don't speak about the religion of Allah if you have no knowledge of it. Some people when they do itikaf in the masjid, and people sometimes have questions, a person who has no knowledge will say, this is the ruling. Allah said in the Quran, وَلَا تَقُولُوا لِمَا تَصِفُوا أَلْسِنَتُكُمُ الْكَذِبِ هَذَا حَلَالٌ وَهَذَا حَرَامٌ لِتَفْتَرُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَذِبِ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَفْتَرُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَذِبَ لَا يُفْلِحُونَ don't open your tongue and say this is halal, this is haram, this is permissible. Rather, Allah said in another ayah, قُلْ إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ رَبِّيَ الْفَوَاحِشَ مَا ظَهَرَ مِنْهَا وَمَا بَطَنَ وَالْإِثْمَ وَالْبَغْيَ بِغَيْرِ الْحَقِّ وَأَنْ تُشْرِكُوا بِاللَّهِ مَا لَمْ يُنَزِّلْ بِهِ عَلَيْكُمْ سُلْطَانًا وَأَنْ تَقُولُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Allah mentioned speaking about his religion with no knowledge after he mentioned shirk. Because shirk is what? Speaking about Allah without knowledge. Very dangerous. Don't indulge in falsehood. Allah told us in the Quran that a group of people will be taken to hellfire. They will be taken to Jahannam. And then they will be asked. They will be interrogated. They will be questioned. It will be said to them, salakakum fi saqar. What brought you to saqar? Saqar is one of the hellfires. I'm one of the names of Jahannam. What brought you to Saqar? Why did you end up in Jahannam? They respond by saying, قَالُوا لَمْ نَكُمْ مِنَ الْمُصَلِّينَ قَالُوا لَمْ نَكُمْ قَالُوا لَمْ نَكُمْ مِنَ الْمُصَلِّينَ We never used to pray. وَلَمْ نَكُمْ نُطْعِمُ الْمِسْكِينَ And we never used to provide the needy and the ones that were in need, the poor, we forsake them. وَكُنَّا نَخُوضُ مَعَ الْخَائِضِينَ And we used to indulge into falsehood. Their tongue was just open. They will speak about any and everything. They are an expert in any and everything. Also, إِذَاءُ muslimin I'm still on the first point. Don't harm the Muslims with your tongue. Slandering them. Name calling. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa look what he told us. In the hadith, Imam Ahmad narrated in his Musnad. And the Rajulan Kala Ya Rasulallah, a man came to the Messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam. A man came to the Prophet. He said, Inna Fulana, Yudkaru, Mil Salatiha, Was Sadaqatiha, Was Siyamiha. There's a woman. She's mentioned her prayer is amazing. Her Sadaqa, amazing. Her fasting, amazing. She is a woman who stands at night and prays. And at daytime, she's fasting. Righteous woman. And the wealth that she has, she gives it out. The only thing that she does is, she verbally abuses her neighbors. Her tongue is open. The messenger quickly said, Here, Finnari, she's in the hellfire. This woman is in the hellfire. Brothers, what did we just say? She prays. She fasts. She gives sadaqah. These are righteous deeds. The messenger said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, she's in the hellfire. Then it was said to him, Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, another woman. They said, Ya Rasulullah, there's another woman. She doesn't fast much. 
she doesn't pray much and she doesn't far uh, she doesn't give much sadaqa she doesn't pray much doesn't mean she prays Dhuhr and Asr not Maghrib and Isha al-Fajr no, she prays the obligatory prayers but she's not a person who comes with many voluntary prayers huh? but she doesn't harm her neighbors she doesn't verbally harm anyone she's a person that the Muslims are safe from her tongue Al-Muslimu man salim al-Muslimuna min lisanihi wa yadi a Muslim is the one who the people save from your tongue and your hand that's what she is she doesn't say anything about anyone her words don't harm anyone she's a person who keeps herself to herself the messenger said here fil jannah this woman is in jannah that's how serious it is, it, it is brothers when it comes to the tongue and backbiting name calling tell parents spreading hate between two parties of people the messenger told us alayhi salatu wasalam Abu Dawood narrated this and Ahmed and others he said Lama Uri Jabi the night I was taken up the night I was ascended up in the sky I was taken up Maratu bi qawmin I came by a group of people I came across a group of people they had nails out of copper what were they doing yakhmishuna wujuhahum wa sudurahum they were scratching their faces and their breasts and chest. Fakul to I then said, Nabila Muhammad, seeing this, he said, Manha ya Jibril, Jibril, who are these people? He was shocked in what he saw. They said to him, Ha illadina ya kuluna. These are the ones who eat. Luhum and nasi, they eat the people's flesh. Slander, backbite, talk about the people. fi a'radihim. And they want to belittle their honor. These are the people. That's what's going to be your consequences, brothers. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amatullah. That's where you're going to end up if you speak about people. I remember many years back, a sister and her husband went separate ways. They went their separate ways. Do you know why? In i'tikaf in Ramadan. Wallahi. In the i'tikaf of Ramadan, some sisters who were doing i'tikaf, she was new to the UK. She didn't know about the system and how things work. So her husband, he didn't inform her of everything. His financial status, he never told her about it. And the UK government, there is some money that they give to you. If you have an amount of children and you make a percentage of money, he didn't tell her all of that. He kept it to himself. So when she did i'tikaf, for the first Ramadan, she did itikaf in the masjid and a group of sisters saw her, new to the community. They don't know her, so they questioned her. They said to her, where are you from? She said, I just recently came. I'm new to the country. Okay. They asked her, they have 10 days with her. And in those 10 days, they questioned her and they told her about everything. And then she said, I didn't know all of this. That my husband gets all of this money. He's never informed me of all of this. They said, is he loyal to you? Does he really love you? Does he care about you? you? Should question that. They spoke to her so much until they said to her, call him now. And she called. He was a very angry man. Fierce. He didn't want to be questioned. His authority. So she called him. And when she called him, she said to him, is this true? Is this the case? Is this, this, this? He said, who are you to tell me, ask me these questions now? Where did you get these questions from? And she said, it doesn't matter, I'm asking you. On the spot, he said, you're divorced. I'm not here to judge. I'm just here to ask you a question. Look at what people whose tongue can do to a family. Who made it your business to talk about people's issues? Are we all together? And to indulge into people's affairs. Allah said in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ وَنَعْلَمُ مَا تُوَسْوِسُ بِهِ نَفْسُهُ وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ حَبْلِ الْوَرِيدِ إِذْ يَتَلَقَى الْمُتَلَقِّيَانِ عَنِ الْيَمِينِ وَعَنِ الشِّمَالِ قَعِيدِ مَا يَلْفِذُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيدٌ There's nothing you say, brothers. There's not a word you utter except that it's written, it's documented, and it will be shown to you the day of judgment. The people that you've spoken about, the people that you've backbited, don't do anyone a favor, just do yourself a favor. Because those people, 
reality is they will get on with their lives and they will do what they want. But it's you that's going to come the day of judgment. And you are a muflis. The messenger said, Atadruda manil muflis. Do you know the corrupt one? The one who's bankrupt. Bankrupt. The Sahabas, they said, dirham. It's the one that doesn't have dinar or dirham. The messenger said, Al muflis. Man yati yawm al qiyamati. The muflis is the one who's going to come the day of judgment. Waqad shatama hadha. He insulted this person. Wadaraba hadha. He hit this person. And he took the wealth of this person. He will come with rewards. This man has good deeds they came with. But he also has on the other side people who he has backbited, people who he has slandered, people who he has name called. Are they going to let go of him? No. They will take from his righteous deeds. They'll say, Give us your deeds. And they will take it. All of the hard work, all of the qiyam and the siyam that he came with. They will take it all. فَإِنْ فَنِيَ حَسَنَاتُ The Prophet said, if his righteous deeds finish, he has no more righteous deeds to give, and there's more stacked against him, their sins will be placed on him. Their shortcoming will be placed on him. And then he will be taken and he will be thrown into the hellfire. Your hard work, your efforts, your fasting, your siyam, your righteous deeds, all of it will be taken. If your backbiting or your slander is large, protect your tongue. Mu'adh ibn Jabalin came to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, Akhbirni bi amalin, tell me an action. Yudikhilni al jannati, it will enter me into jannah. Wa yuba'iduni min al nari, it will distance me from the hellfire. They said, Laqad sa'al, the Prophet said to him, Laqad sa'alta an azimin, wa innahu la yasirun ala man yasarahu allahu alayhi. The messenger said to him, you have asked about something very easy and it's only easy for the one who Allah makes it easy for. And the messenger told him about worship Allah alone. And then the messenger said to him, shall I tell you the doors of good? He said, of course. And then the messenger told him it. And then the Prophet ﷺ went on to say it. Shall I tell you the basis of all of that? This is after the Prophet mentioned the Salah, the Prophet mentioned Jihad, the Messenger mentioned righteous deeds. He said, shall I tell you the foundation for all of that? The basis where all of that stands on? Mu'ad said, of course. Of course, O oh Messenger of Allah, tell me. The Messenger grabbed his tongue and he said to him, Kuffa alayka hadha. Kuffa alayka hadha means what? Protect this organ. Mu'adh al Shakti said, Wa inna la mu'akhaduna bima natakallamu bihi ya Rasulullah. Are we going to be held account for what we say? Are we going to be punished based upon, upon our speech? The messenger said, Thakilatka ummuka ya Mu'adh. Mu'adh, may your mother lose you. Wa hal yakubu? Wa hal yakubu nas? What is it that's going to throw the people into the hellfire? Ala wujuhihim face first, illa hasaid al sinatim. They will go to the hellfire with their face first. Why? Except their tongue. Why will they go into their face, into the hellfire first? Because that's where the tongue is. That's where the tongue is. So the tongue has to be burnt straight away. Brothers, the messenger told us, Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhir. Anyone who believes in Allah and the Day of Judgment, فَلْيَقُلْ خَيَرًا أَوْ يَصْمُتْ Say good or be silent. Think. Am I going to get reward for this? No. Don't say it. If there's, it, if there's ajr in it for you, say it. If there isn't, leave it. Stay away from backbiting. Stay away from namima, tell-bearing. Wallahi, it's azim. It's a very serious issue. False allegations. Falsely say things about people. Remember, you're going to stand in front of Allah Azza wa Jalla and you're going to be accounted. And remember, as I said to you before, the one who backbites, the one who tailbearers, who talks about other people's honor and then and lies about them, makes up things. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Ya ma'ashara man amana bi lisanihi. 
ولم يدخل الإيمان في قلبي لا تغتابن المسلمين ولا تتبع عورات فمن تتبع عورة أخي تتبع الله عورته ومن تتبع الله عورته يفضح الله في جوف بيته The Prophet told us those of you who are believers don't follow up the mistakes of your brothers لا تتبع عوراتهم The message is saying to this don't look at somebody's mistakes and follow them up The messenger then said ومن تتبع عورة أخي anyone who follows up the mistake of his brother trying to find a slip a shortcoming with him تتبع الله عورة الله who come after your mistakes and anyone Allah comes after his mistakes Allah will expose what's in your household the things that happen in your inner chamber in your bedroom the things that happen and in your private affairs Allah will bring it out in the open do yourself a favor leave the Muslims and their honor alone don't back by them don't slander them stay away from it a man came to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said to him Ya Rasulullah, man naja, what's success? Success. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him three things. The Messenger said, Amsik alayka lisanak. Get hold of your tongue. Walzam baytak. Remain in your house when the fitna hits. Don't talk on social media and have your input and what you want to leave all of that. Stay in your house. Stay away from those fitna. And the third thing that the messenger said is, Wabki ala khati'atik. Cry over your shortcomings and your mistakes. Three things are success. The messenger said this to you. Alayhi salatu wasalam. Hadith Uqbatum ibn Amirin in Sunan Tirmidhi. The messenger was sitting with his companions one day. A bad smell came. An evil smell came. Rih muntinna. A bad smell. It didn't smell nice. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ The Messenger said to the companions, أَتَدْرُونَ مَا هَذِهِ الْرِيحِ Do you know where this bad smell is coming from? The Sahabas, they looked at the Prophet, they said, no. He said, هَذِهِ الْرِيحِ الَّذِينَ يَغْتَابُونَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ أَمَا الَّذِينَ يَغْتَابُونَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ This is the smell that's coming from those who are backbiting the Muslims. This smell is coming from those who are backbiting the Muslims. The messenger told us, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, لا يدخل الجنة نمام. A talbarer. A nammam is a talbarer. What is a talbarer? A person who wants to cause uh, conflict between two parties. He wants two people to fight head on. He's, spe- he's spreading news so they can fight each other and that they can go against each other. The messenger told us, لا يدخل الجنة. He or she will never enter Jannah. What is the second thing that I want, inshallah ta'ala, for us to do with our tongue in this last 10 days? is before i mention it i just want to mention a powerful hadith the prophet sallallahu told us hadith in, in sahih al-bukhari min hadith abi huraira kana rajulun min bani israila there was a man from the the people of bani israil and he was a abid a worshiper he was a worshiper he used to worship allah a lot the hadith is found in sahih al-bukhari and there was a sinner one who used to commit many sins and this abid, this worshiper, will come to the sinner and he will say to him, Stop what you're doing. Rectify your situation. Repent to Allah. Leave off what you're doing every day. And this one wouldn't stop. He would carry on doing it. And one day he said to him, Aba'atta Were you sent as a private investigator? Why are you always on my case? The sinner is saying this. He got angry. And the other one, the worshipper, what did he do? He said to him, Wallahi la yaghfirullahu laka. Wallahi Allah is not going to forgive you. Oh, big statement. His tongue. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, فَقَبَضَ اللَّهُ أَرْوَاحَهُمَا Allah took both of their ruh. فَاجْتَمَعَ عِنْدَ رَبِّ الْأَرْضِ وَالسَّمَاءِ they both came in front of Allah. Both of them. The sinner and the worshipper. And Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he said to him, Akunta bi aliman. Did you know, were you very knowledgeable about my affairs? What I go to do and what I'm not going to do? Allah said this. 
Did you know what I was capable of doing? Are you strict in my capability? Your Lord gives. You are strict in my giving. Allah then said to him, Go to the hellfire. Go to the hellfire for which one? To which one? The one who said, Wallahi la yaghfirullahu laka, Allah is not going to forgive you. The worshipper. Go to the hellfire. And I have nullified all of your righteous deeds. All of your righteous deeds is gone. And Allah said to the sinner, Go and enter Jannah because of my mercy. Abu Huraira, he said, I swear by the Lord in which my soul is in his hand. This man spoke He spoke a speech that destroyed his dunya and his hereafter. Everything. Brothers, it's not enough to say I'm passionate about the religion of Allah that you can slander a person and say what you want. Just because you're passionate about the deen, you slander a person unjustly. Or you say a person is a disbeliever. This man, the mujtahid, the abid here, was what? Ghira took him. So what did he do to his brother? He placed takfir on him. Wallahi la yaghfirullahu laka. It's takfir. You're a kafir. And the same today is taking the matter of tabdi'ah. Say fulan is a mubtadi'ah. It's the same. It's the same brother. Lightly just throwing that word at someone. You're a mubtadi'ah. And Imam Ahmed said, إِخْرَاجُ النَّاسِ عَنِ السُنَّةِ شَدِيدٍ Taking the people out of the sunnah is a severe issue. Ahmed said that, rahimahullah ta'ala. It's not a light issue. The tongue, it'll destroy you, brothers. This man, it destroyed him. It took him to the hellfire. And it made all of his righteous deeds get nullified. Another issue that we find with many people is, they speak about the scholars. They slander the scholars. They open their tongue at the scholars. Ibn Asakir, he said something very powerful. He said, The flesh of the scholars is poisonous. The flesh of the scholars is poisonous. Anyone who opens his tongue to the scholars and speaks about the scholars and says things about them, Allah will make your heart die before the real death comes to you. Before you even, uh, you die, your heart's gonna die. A lot of people, they apostated. They left the deen because they would open their tongue at the people of knowledge. These are Ahlullah, these are the people of Allah Azza wa They are occupying the seat of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Be very careful. وَالَّذِينَ يُذُونَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ بِغَيْرِ مَكْتَسَبُوا فَقَدْ اِحْتَمَلُوا بُهْتَانًا وَإِثْمًا مُبِينًا Allah tells, us, Allah tells us in that ayah, وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْذُونَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ The ones who are harming the believers, وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ And they are harming the female believers, بِغَيْرِ مَكْتَسَبُوا In that which they did not do, false allegations. They didn't do this, you're lying about them. فَقَدْ اِحْتَمَلُوا بُهْتَانًا وَإِثْمًا مُبِينًا The day of judgment, you're going to take a severe punishment for that. Be very careful. Again, don't do anyone a favor. Just do yourself a favor. What you're going to come with Allah Azza wa Jalla the day of judgment. Remember that. The second point is that if we want a benefit from the last 10 days of Ramadan is let's talk about good. If we've eliminated speaking about bad and evil, let's speak about the opposite which is good. Allah told us in the Quran, لا خير في كثير من نجواكم Many of you, لا خير في كثير من نجواهم. Many of the people's discussions and their discuss, their discussions and their talks, there's not much خير in it. Except what? إلا من أمر بصدقة أو معروف أو إصلاح بين الناس. Except the one who calls to good. Many gatherings that families are having in their household, لا خير في كثير من نجواهم. Many of your discussions at home, many of it is not good. It's only good. If it's based upon ma'roof, you're commanding your relatives to keep ties of kinship with your other family re- relatives. Why have we boycotted so-and-so? Shouldn't we remember them? You're commanding good. You're talking about taking sadaqah from the family to give it to poor and in need, those in need. Allah said that's the best speech. 
The third and the last one is use your tongue to remember Allah. Dhikr. The man came to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said to him, in the al Islami, the legislations of the religion are too much. There's too much rulings in the religion, too much. He was a basic man. His capability and his ability to comprehend many information was hard. He wasn't able to take all of that information in. A noble companion. He just wanted to hold on to one thing. He said, In the Sharai al Islami, the legislations of the religion have become many. They are too much on me. Tell me something I can hold on to. Something I can hold on to. Then the messenger said, لا يزال لسانك رطبا بذكر الله. Don't let your mouth or your tongue dry from the remembrance of Allah. You're sitting somewhere, say your dhikr. The messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, كلمتان خفيفتان على اللسان ثقيلتان في الميزان حبيبتان إلى الرحمن سبحان الله وبحمده سبحان الله العظيم. These two words, سبحان الله وبحمده and سبحان الله العظيم. The hadith told us, خفيفتان they are light on the tongue. Look how quick I said it. سبحان الله وبحمده سبحان الله العظيم. Quick. ثقيلتان في الميزان but they are heavy on the scale. حبيبتان إلى الرحمن and they are beloved to Allah عز وجل. Very beloved to Him. What are they? سبحان الله وبحمده سبحان الله العظيم. Many of you are driving. You're in your car. You're just sitting there. You're daydreaming. You're talking about the cro the gr gross profit and the net profit. You've worked enough, alhamdulillah. Ninety-five. You are making money. Just now, what you do is sit there and say, سبحان الله وبحمده سبحان الله سبحان الله العظيم. Don't let your work take you home. Don't let your work come home with you. Whilst you're driving, how much dhikr can you do? Are you with me, brothers? Many. This is the last 10 days. You, know, you need to do that. And this is going to, inshallah ta'ala, come for you the day of judgment. Bi'idhnillahi al-kareem. Allahumma a'inna ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husn ibadatik. Oh Allah, aid us and support us in your remembrance and to show you gratitude and for us to perfect our ibadah. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka atubu ilayk.